is Ellie coming to you from Australia, also known as The Future. Hello to everyone who's seen me for the first time and hello and welcome back to all of my wonderful subscribers. Let's go through some of your questions. I've had a question from Kathy and Kathy says, hi Ellie, hello. Um, I hope you and the girls are enjoying your springtime. We are, except it's a bit cold today. I was wondering about the alien abductions that have been reported for at least 70 years now. Many very credible people have told stories of being abducted and having experiments done involving their reproductive organs. One woman who was abducted and ended up pregnant, which was verified by her doctor, who had an ultrasound of the fetus, went to her doctor a week after an exam and told him that she had gone to bed and dreamt that she was taken on a spaceship, a spaceship and had her baby removed. When the doctor checked her there was no sign of her being pregnant, even though he had just seen her a week prior. There are numerous stories of this kind. What are the aliens up to? Are they possibly creating a hybrid race? Are they doing this for the betterment of, of mankind or to help themselves somehow? Inquiring minds want to know. Thanks for never making us feel weird about our fire out questions. No worries. Some of my favorite questions are the fire out questions. Because you know what? Um, let's enjoy this, you know, we don't have to always talk about Donald. There are so many other things. And um, one person's fire out question is somebody else's just question, you know. So, yes, there are lots and lots of stories. And I think one of the caveats that we need to place on this is that I think it's um, the stories fall within three different categories. You've got the genuine stories of phenomenon that exist out there and then you have the people who genuinely believe but that's because they're maybe kind of mistaken or delusional or something and then you have the ones that for whatever reason whether it's they're grifting or they want attention or notoriety and so I think that the actual genuine episodes are far less than what we're hearing but, you know, a lot of people throw their hat into the ring when there's something to be said. And um, and that's a shame because what it does is it takes away from the genuine stories and the people who really have something to say, but also probably need support as well. The question, however, is what are the aliens up to? I think the prevalent theory is that they're creating hybrids for some reason. I know that um, I've been reading up on this a little bit because obviously for the universe always wins. I want to make sure that I'm able to carry out, you know, carry on conversations with people. Um, and so I'm trying to learn what I can. There are two prevalent theories that I'm aware of. And that is when it comes to the issue of um, reproductive, creating a reproductive hybrid type of race. The first one is that the extraterrestrial race is suffering from immunity issues or in, um, incapability, what's it called? Um, when, when, you, when you cannot sustain life uh, in a certain atmosphere and so they're trying to breed that out of themselves so that they can actually be stronger and sustain life for longer or just sustain their race for longer the other um, issue is that they are slowly infiltrating earth i actually think that if it is taking place then it's probably the first i think it is to protect their own race and to create a stronger, more uh, impervient to disease kind of um, existence. So to strengthen against possible threats in the future. But anyway, let's see what the cards have to say. I forgot to do the camera again, didn't I? Oh. 
Okay, so we've got the two of wands in reverse, the three of wands, and the page of cups. So the two of wands in reverse is an unexpected turn of events, a, uh, a new perspective. Um, there may also be reluctance or self-restriction here. We then have exploration, um, a new enterprise. You see the new perspective and the new enterprise. Um, a new enterprise, responsibility and entrepreneurship. And then we've got this um, introspection, creative insight and arrival of a message. Okay. Um, it doesn't say... It doesn't say anything about any of the theories that I stated. And so, you know, instead, it looks as though it's more an explorative kind of thing. I think that's what it is. It's explorative. This um, self-restriction element and the unexpected turn of events may have something to do with things in the past i think that they have that have brought them to try and create something better in the future but it's it looks as though it's an exploration of new things but the responsibility that appears in this card may also be relevant and then the creative insight and introspection arrival of message would indicate that maybe we're going to be hearing about something soon okay so you know pe humans often experiment there's things like you know cloning for example and there there's lots of reasons for cloning there's just the exploration of what's possible there's also you know scientific breakthroughs and being able to with cloning maybe clone a diseased part of the body and then um, transplant it so that you're you know you've got exactly the same body that's working in the same way but without the the disease you've also got um you know child replacement theory <laughs> where if you don't like one you can always just recreate them differently or to be able to choose the kind of child you want gender and things like there's all kinds of reasons and to try and strengthen the human race by creating a new kind of thing and then there's just curiosity what's possible this looks like a lot of that kind of thing science and exploration and creativity that's that's what it looks like but it's born from something that may have been um, obstacles in the past that have led to maybe trying to create less obstacles in the future i don't see anything here about um, trying to protect against their vulnerabilities specifically. This, I, this has an identity, this card. So merging us into a hybrid is a possibility, but it's not really what the cards are saying. The cards are mostly talking about exploration, creativity, and um, and sort of trying to do better improvement thanks for the question tg40 has asked hello ellie hello i uh, love your channel and how you interpret the cards thank you very much my question is and now i've not heard this before so I, I don't know what to make of this the question is is elon musk's Neuralink the biblical mark of the beast that is mentioned in the book of revelations right let me just look up this biblical mark of the beast you see i haven't gotten to revelations yet <laughs> so i don't know so uh the mark of the beast so this is revel the mark of the beast is revelations thirteen sixteen, and can be described as any mark engraved imprinted or branded stamped money document or a coin the mark of the beast is interpreted differently across the four main views of christian oh right so this mark of the beast that is worn on their head, this is the one which people are saying could be the mega symbol is actually could be the mark of the beast as well. 
So in Revelations, uh, it says that the mark of the beast is that all people, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, will be given a stamped image on their right hands or their foreheads, and that is the mark of the beast. And people have sometimes speculated that it might be the mega symbol on the mega cap. Um, okay, so the Neuralink. So now I know what that is. Let's have a look at Neuralink. Oh, that's the implant. Right, yes, of course. This is the brain computer chip thing that's implantable, uh, cosmetically invisible, and designed to let you control a computer or a mobile device with your brain. I mean, okay, if you haven't got any fingers, okay, I can understand. But God, we're getting lazy, aren't we? can't even be bothered lifting a finger to go like that on the laptop for real okay it reminds me when I was younger I was temping for a law firm and I've got to see if I can get this right um, this notorious solicitor who worked at this law firm who was one of the people that I worked for he came into this is I was just office support he came bursting into the room and he was always gruff and you know he was the kind of guy he'd throw stuff at 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 staff as he walked past if he thought they were doing something he was just a bit you know anyway tough to deal with but he seemed to like me so I survived but I remember he came crashing into the office one day he was dictating a letter and he said take I want you to send this person a letter and the letter was really simple and it said something like uh, please explain to me the reason why you haven't responded to my telephone call message that I've left. Did you break your finger? Have you forgotten which numbers to dial? Did you lose your typewriter or whatever it is? You know, did you forget to come back from lunch? I mean, ex explain to me what it was that made you physically incapable of responding in a timely manner to whatever it is that he'd written as a, you know, probably as a legal threat. Um, and the way that he said it was just so blunt and um, rude and impatient that I had to laugh all the way while I was typing it. Anyway, it printed out, he signed it and we sent it. <laughs> just reminds me of that. Uh, how lazy people can be that they need. Yeah. Did, is your finger not working and that's why you need a Neuralink chip? I don't know. Anyway, all right. I've digressed way too much. I've gone a bit bonkers. Let's get back. This is just what this reminds me of. Is Neuralink actually what is meant by the mark of the beast from Revelations? Let's have a look here. Good question. Good question. I think it might be the mega hat, to be honest. But it's not my decision to make here. Let's just see. Neuralink. So we've got the Three of Swords. The Two of Wands in Reverse and the Three of Wands. Yeah, no. Um, so the Three of Swords is about miscommunication, hurtful words and a painful realization. The two of wands in reverse is an unexpected turn of events. Um, and there could be a new perspective here, self-restriction and reluctance. And then we've got this entrepreneurial card, um, uh, which is about responsibility and new enterprise and things like that. I actually um, think no. So the answer is no. I think the cards are also providing me with some context with regards to Neuralink, which are about, you know, the, the, the entrepreneurial, explorative type of elements. Also the new perspective, like a new way of doing things, which science often is responsible for. And then um, I, I think the answer of no comes here. And this is an explanation of what of what Neuralink is for. But interesting idea. Thanks for the question. Uh, Mema has said, sorry if this has been asked before, but was wondering why there doesn't seem to be an unredacted copy of the Mueller report available. 
With the Freedom of Information Act, I would have expected an open copy to be made available. What kind of secret rating has it gotten? Plus a big thank you for all you do for us. Um, there is, um, you can get the Mueller report on Amazon. You can get the Mueller report on um, uh, uh, Audible. <laughs> I think I listened to it on Audible. There's only one part of it, um, and that is the redacted volume that has not been made available. And I actually think that I'm going to, you've just reminded me, I'm going to do a reading on that redacted section. Um, I think it's a redacted chapter or volume. And it relates to Donald's relationship with Russia, I think. The reason why I would like to know whether that is going to actually be unredacted um, in the foreseeable future is because I do suspect that a lot of things are converging together that are going to allow us, that are going to reveal Donald's relationship to Russia in more detail. The redacted text in that volume, I think, is probably partly national security related, which might be the reason why it's redacted, but it may also have been Robert Mueller's way at of, and it may not have even been Robert Mueller, it may have been Bill Barr, um, for two different reasons. To hide information from the public. If it was Bill Barr that arranged for it to be redacted, then it would just be to cover up for Donald, I think. And if it was Robert Mueller who uh, agreed for it all to be redacted, or arranged for it all to be redacted, it could be so that it could be used later. And there's no spoiler alerts, you know what I mean, without spoilers. But let's have a look. Is it ever going to be released to the public? This final volume of the Mueller report. Be nice to know if it, if, if we could get a sense of what it contained as well. <clears throat> Queen of Cups in reverse, the Queen of Swords and the Star. Yes. Okay, so the vulnerability could relate to Donald's vulnerability or national security vulnerability. We've got this justice, truth and disclosure element here. And then we've got hope uh, and second chances. I think it will be disclosed. I think that the vulnerability can be a combination of things. It can be a combination of the national security secrets that need to be uh, kept under wraps for as long as they're relevant. But it may also be to protect the information from it being so heavily scrutinized and disclosed that it no longer can be used against Donald later. So it might contain evidence that he would be able to counter if he was given enough time. I think that the vulnerability card there with the Queen of Cups in reverse, it probably relates to more than one thing. But it looks like, yes, we are going to get to see what that volume contains at some point. Thanks for the question. Um, Sunny Lynn has said, Hi Ellie, you're such a gift during these tough times. Thank you so much. Love your bubbly readings. Okay, thank you. Thank you. My question is uh, about um, Donald's dad and how he feels about how Donald has destroyed the business he built and their family name. Realizing his past, does he get from the grave what an F up he, he created? Does he regret how he raised Donald to be a malignant narcissist, spoiled sociopath brat who has tried to destroy our country? Thank you. Okay, so um, let me see here. The questions are, how does Fred Trump feel about a few things? Firstly, the man he created, the impact that Donald, you know, this the, the son he created, the impact that that son has had on the family name and the business. Let's have a look here. The cards may answer both at once, but let's just see. How does Fred Trump about feel about the legacy that his son Donald has created for not only himself, but his family, the family name, everything? Seven of Wands, Seven of Pentacles, and the Devil. Okay. 
Right. So this is pretty, this is actually quite a sophisticated response here. You've got ready and willing to accept the challenge, um, disappointment and missed opportunities, and then um, uh, addiction, codependency, bad habits, and an element of complacency. I think that what Fred Trump is thinking as he looks upon the events that have transpired since his death as a result of uh, Donald's behavior is that he's not, I don't think he is necessarily upset at the kind of man that Donald is for the purposes of, you know, did he turn out to be a good man or a bad man? I don't think it's that. I think this being ready and willing to accept the challenge is about, you know, my son can do whatever he wants kind of thing. I'm not going to, you know, I think the fact that uh, he's managed to stay afloat doesn't matter what he's done to other people. I don't think he particularly cares about that. I think that there are other things that he does have concern for. These are the missed opportunities and the failures. So, and the element of complacency, things like addiction and and codependency. I think he probably knows more about Donald than we do. But it's an interesting kind of dynamic that you can see here. There are aspects of Donald's legacy that he doesn't care about. I think perhaps he doesn't care too much about the impact that he's had on other people. Because he's still, even though he's passed, he's not suddenly going to become a saint. He is still Fred Trump. And so he's still going to have the same persona. Fred Trump was not a nice man. And so he's still not going to be a nice man. I think this is about disappointment. Uh, about, you know, how whiny he is and how um, uh, embarrassing he might be and, and how he, in you know, the way that he describes, he, 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 um, he talks or can't form a sentence together or you know, some of the embarrassing private details that come out or, or, you know, things like that. I think it's more, imagine a father who has always been judgmental and a bit cruel towards his kids, the way that he would perceive success and failure. I don't think he cares too much about the legacy of, um, or the impact that his son has had on others or the legacy that's left behind. He's already enjoyed all of the things that he can get out of it. I actually think he's more embarrassed by the embarrassing things and the pitiful things and the signs of weakness, um, any addictions or, or codependencies that he has, the whining, that kind of thing. I think that would get to him. Thanks for the question. Let's do one more. And I've asked this question before, but I want to stay on top of it because I'd like to know the answer myself. Catherine has asked, um, hi Ellie, hello. My question is, if convicted, will Donald Trump go to jail or will it be a home confinement sentence? Let's have a look here. Um, let's see what the cards have to say. Will it be prison or will it be like a home confinement? Or will there be a, a, a third kind of option that I'm not even sure what that might be? Now, this might be difficult to, to be able to distinguish because um, let's just see. Let's just see. The cards know how I interpret. So there might be a way to slice the definitions so that it's easy for me to see the difference. Donald is convicted. He will definitely be convicted. He, uh, not necessarily everything, I don't know, but he's definitely going to get some stiff penalty. And I do believe he's going to be um, removed from public view. Is it going to be, or his public access is going to be removed? Is it going to be a home confinement thing, or is it going to be prison? Whether he was a Democrat or a Republican, I think it's important for it to be prison. I think that the shock needs to be pretty severe 
because there's a lot of bad behavior in Washington that's just getting out of control. They really do need to have the bejesus get out of them a little bit so that they snap back into line. But anyway, let's just see what the cards say. Temperance. King of Swords. And the Queen of Cups. Okay, right. Now, remember I said the cards are going to say it in a, in a way that I understand because they understand the way that I interpret. They understand the way that my brain works. Take a look at this. You've got balance, chemistry and getting it right. Okay, going from, you see this fellow is balancing from one cup to the other. Okay, so the cup is never, the that cup is never full because it's going from this cup to that cup. The water is constantly flowing. And then we have these two distinctly different cards. One is the king and one is the queen. The king is tough, no nonsense. This is a serious, um, um, they yield the sort of truth and justice. They take no prisoners. This king is not to be messed with. So this is a very resolute response. Okay. The queen is the exact opposite. She's soft and delicate and friendly and compassionate and kind, and she's going to give you lots of leeway. We have the balance between them. Now, I don't, I'm tempted to put down another card, but I'm not going to, because I don't think that at the moment it's going to do me any good. I have to kind of understand what this means. And I actually think that what it means is he is going to get a very stiff, resolute penalty. It's, it's going to send a very sharp shock. There are considerations that are put in place because of his presidency, probably. But also, it's not just his presidency. There has to be something that helps to mitigate the shock of the public. So this would be the shock of the people who support him. And so there is going to be a balance of some kind. And what this tells me is that it's neither one nor the other. It's kind of both. So if if he it may be home confinement, but in no kind of home he's ever had before. It could be a special facility that is built just for him. It could be um, you know, a military hospital or a military base. I don't think he's going to be put into the general prison population. There's going to be something else. And as far as I'm concerned, that's okay. I think he should just be out of circulation. He should not be able to communicate with the American people. Out of sight, out of mind. But I don't think he's going to be at Mar-a-Lago with his feet up, drinking a cocktail. I think that it's going to be a proper incarceration, but perhaps in a special facility, something like that. That's what it looks like. It looks like a balance between prison and home. Thanks for the question. I'm really glad you asked. That's it for today. Good questions. I love the variety. Love it a lot. Don't forget... If you're going to leave a comment and you want to be in the running for the free personal private reading with me when we hit 30,000 subscribers, then begin your comment with the words Smudgy says. We're going to do this on all the videos until the channel reaches 30,000 subscribers. And then I'm going to do a word search and pick a random person to get that personal private reading with me. Good luck. Until then, thanks so much for watching. I love knowing you're here and I'll see you in my dreams. Bye.